It's the most excited you will see me <laughs> welcome you to the DNA podcast. It's Dr. and Andile, uh, proudly brought to you by 10-Bit. My excitement is uh, um, obviously due to Bafana Bafana, but in this podcast, we're going to be discussing what Bafana Bafana did against Morocco and what could they potentially do against Cabo Verde. Uh, now, they say football is not just a game played with feet, but it's an emotional thing. It is uh, it is something to which we all behold and look at because you remember things about football that made you feel a certain way. We can go back and have many conversations about some of the big moments that made you feel. And then we'll take that and look at the game against Morocco. What is it about that game? It's just a quarterfinals. Stuart Baxter go to the quarterfinals. We've been to the quarterfinals before. But what was so special about this game is we finally saw what we've been asking of South Africa for a very long time. We saw heart. And we went in there with them. They made us believe. Welcome to it. This is uh, after South Africa just qualified for the quarterfinals. We beat Morocco by two goals to zero. Come on, Lingu with this is uh, 10 bits based, Dr. Kumalu. Sure. Togi. Yeah. What are you doing? He came. Eh? <laughs> Just sitting watching. I was watching and... Your thoughts before the game? Look, uh, my thoughts before the game, I looked at the, 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 the strengths and the weaknesses of both teams. And I also look at the personnel from... Uh, Morocco and South Africa and history in mm. terms of um, how we fare and how do they fare uh, against uh, ascetic teams. So when I go back, mm. we don't seem to struggle to play the North. And we, 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 we seem to be getting our tactical approach right. So the other factor laying in the good thing, man, no man, we we are going to match these guys. Is the fact that when I looked at the team sheet, we had uh, eight players from Sundowns, and we had two players out of Sundowns, not uh, Papelo and Dao. Dao and Mahopa. And Mahopa front, yeah. Three only. Yeah. So the rest is from Sundowns, and you must. Understand what Sundowns have played, Raja Casablanca, they've played, they've beaten Al Akli, all that. So it was not going to be a tough game for Bafana based on those facts. My, my, my thinking whenever you know, I hear that, though, you know, yeah. is to say they've played teams that have players based in Morocco. Morocco, yeah. That play, you know, locally there. Yes. The national team. Yeah. Both players from the EPL, all is. L, you know, um, La Liga, yeah. uh, Ligue 1, uh, and all of that. So does that still really equate? It does, because they don't come there as individuals. They need to play as a as a unit, as a team. Mm. So the culture of Morocco needs to, to be out there. Mm. And Hakim, he cannot play the right back as much as he does that in, at PSG. When you, when you play for your team, it's totally different when you come and play for, for the national team. I'll give you a simple example. There are certain players that when they play for their teams, they got 100% uh, like good performance. Mm. But they come to the national team, given a chance, you get nothing to them from mm. them. So coming to the national team, it's, 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 it's a setup. It's a, it's a short spell because you don't get to have a chance as a coach to work with the players as much as you have the time when you are club level. club level. So with the national team, they need to adjust to the culture of the national team. So how they grew up. So if I can give it to you, look at the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. They're struggling because those players, 90% of them, they weren't born in, in Ivory Coast. They weren't born in Ivory Coast. They don't know nothing about the culture of Ivory Coast. The struggles of the people of Ivory Coast. They don't know anything about that. So a player like that, hence we, we've, we've had through the corridors, would, their best players left because of the, the, the food. They thought it was not conducive. The hotel, it was not conducive because they're not used 
Uksokola. They are not used to, to, to live that kind of life. They don't have the background of Ivory Coast. So now that also plays a major role because you look at our boys. Yes, we might have Tao out of the country and Spain, but they played in South Africa. They were born in South Africa. They know exactly what does it take to wear that jersey? What does it mean to represent that flag? Hmm. Yes. 100%. Let's focus on our boys a little bit. 2-0 was the end score there, beating Morocco. A stunner of a goal, um, the, the, that free kick from um, Odebza. The first goal as well, Vincent Mahopa. He was under so much fire with so many people saying, mm. he hasn't given anything. Get something and he scores 2-0 is how it ends. Doggy, I don't want to give you segments. I just want to hear you holistically. Yeah. What did you think of the 90 minutes? When I look at the 90 minutes, uh, it's it's the tactical approach. So holistically, I can give you four to five points that Hugo Bruce and Hellman and the background staff utilized on. Mm. Number one, they prepared before the match. They knew exactly which button to press. Mm. Secondly, they prepared for the weather. Mm. Thirdly, they prepared the tactical approach based on the surface and the opponents. Ne? And then number four, they manage the squad. If you look at the space up and Munara came on, it happened in one of the games prior versus Morocco. So they knew exactly which uh, uh, subs we're going to use because that is a very key factor that people don't even think about it. Your subs plays a major role because the humidity, the surface of the field, the pressure of the game, it comes into play, but those who are sitting on the bench, when you bring them on, you must know which kind of a player or what kind of a player am I bringing on. Mm. And that on its own, I think that's how they, they wrapped up the game because... After we scored, I don't know whether it was the first or the second goal, they took out Spade because he was out already. He, he was worn out. And the boy played very well. Hence, I was saying we found a jewel, I mean, a, a, a diamond in him. And look when they substituted him. But Bafago Munare. Munare was there to stabilize because uh, Morocco were now trying to force to equalize. They were yeah. forcing the game to go to extra time. But we had to maintain and contain the middle field. And then that allowed us to have a Mukwena going forward. So there was balance, mm. you know, uh, the, the, the Maseko introduction. So subs are not just subs, are subs because of the need, tactically. So we take out Morena, we're bringing a skillful Masego. So they were spot on, all of them. Because Mofago Masego, Hakim can't go forward because Masego doesn't track. So that on its own, it's, it's, it's a tactical approach. And at that phase, for me, it was unbelievable. Defensively, Mvala, as well as Gran Kekana in the middle, mm -hmm. and the two boys on the sides, there's the speedsters. Are mm -hmm. you happy with what we did defensively? Because at some point, it looked like we were just containing them. They were coming at us. Ronald mm -hmm. Williams had mm -hmm. an outstanding game as well. Of course. So that back five, what did you make of them? The the back five, um, magnificent. They they did very well. And uh, I saw a little bit of uh, Mudiba, your, your Mudau, now not overlapping a lot. Now they were maintaining and keeping the shape at the back because those guys, they were forcing... Yeah, up, right. yeah on the right-hand side, uh, but uh, it's just that to be able to mm. a smart boy, because Mudao is not just a defender. I got lastly ball. He gets it. And that you can see, it's a DNA that comes from sundowns. Even if you are picked, in order for to choose a lot of kill, or You know, mm. when they play the ball, they they, they don't play the little space in the two teams. No, 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 and. Uh, Another, another factor that was very key, the Grand, the grand Kekane that got injured mm. 
and he, he was trapped heavily in Kanda. You know, sometimes we need to, to tell it the way it's supposed to be told. Mm. You know, I, I hear a lot of people, eh, no, Mvala is costing us, eh, what, what? Look now, the penalty. These, these are situations that you expect in a game. Now, do you want to tell me, is there any player that wants to go on the field and say, no, I'm going to score your own goal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give them a penalty. Yeah. I'm going to foul them in the final third. No, there's no player that does that. If we look at it, it was just an unfortunate situation. But let's look at the load that this boy is giving us. Hmm. He's giving us a shape. He's giving us a, a fear for strikers to go there. Because they tackle, they take anything that comes their way. Clean. Clean, Nakona. And the beauty also to add spice, they are two, those two central defenders, they can build up from the back. Because most of the defenders, they struggle. They can't build from the back. And if you have that kind of a defender in this modern football, you, you're about to lose. But when we talk the principles of, of, of play, defensive, attack, transition, they possess all that. Great performance. Of course. All round. Yes. Yeah. But I still have a bit of a concern. Okay. And it's in and around Percy Dow. Yes. We know the abilities of Percy Dow, particularly this past season at Alakli, uh, his best season. Yes. The best player in Egypt right now. One of the best players on the continent. I am not saying so. The Intercontinental Award he won says so. Yeah. He goes to the Club World Cup, does very well there as well. Yeah. I am not sure... I am seeing that Percy at AFCON. Yeah. Not judging him according to anything but his own standards. Yes. Uh, what a good question. Good observation. Uh, at some stage, uh, when the game was still on, I was asking myself, where's the Percy Tau? He hasn't showed up, you know? He might have missed his penalty and he scored another one, converted it. Let me give it to you. Prajo Mosono, Praje. Mm. When we were preparing for a Ghana game, he said, and even the Tunisia game, mm. he said, Clive, if I were you, I wouldn't play doctor. I haven't seen him. Mm. Clive said, no. I, wouldn't, I don't want to risk that. Raji said, but I haven't seen him throughout the tournament. And we're heading to the semis and the final. Now, why did you think Clive wanted me to be there? is because of the relation and the social factor. When Doc is not there, probably three or four players, they're going to feel the pinch. So a Percy there, all the players are like, oh no, Percy's still on the field. He can do something. So it's, it's the belief that individuals have. There's a player that you cannot afford just to substitute. Mm. You need him in order for the ship to be able to sail properly. So a Percy Tau, might not be on song, but his presence is felt by his teammates and the opponents. Mm. At some stage, Emudiba got injured with no one explaining or showing Pesu what to do. I saw it. He just went straight to the number three position. That's experience. While Mudiba was holding his ankle right by the corner frank mm. and the referee signal play on, Percy went to give you cover. So those kind of things, we need to take them into consideration. There are certain players, you don't just take them out because they are not playing the way you, you, you expect them to do or to deliver. It's the personnel that you need on the field. It's the strength that he possesses that will give other players a 100% performance because his shadow, they can smell him, they can feel him. So you don't just substitute him. Only if now you want to close the game and it's towards the, uh, the, the critical phase, you can say, Percy, thank you very much, come out. Why do you think Clive didn't take me out in the final? Because what he did, he changed my position from being a winger to the middle. And where did you get the goals? I created them. Because in the final, I was not there. Mm. Number one, shoes was shadow marked. <clears throat> he, he, he didn't play. But why didn't he take him out? Because he knew if he take him out, I won't be able to function. Cheaper, I won't be able to function. Sizwe, Markfish, we won't. But we choose the, we, you can even play one touch then back, but his presence makes a difference because we can see, we can feel him. So there are certain players that are like that. 
you know, we can argue to say, no, this is not happening. But based on what I know, my experience, this is how I feel about Pese. Oh, I didn't see it that way. Let's go to Evidence Mahoba. Yeah. Scored a, a good goal. Oh, of course. And set us up for the victory with yes. the goal. Mm. But I then wonder, when you look at the goal, the game holistically and the, the opportunities he got, Debra from the right gives him a glorious ball. Yes. He sees it coming. He beats the offside trap. Mm -hmm. You know, he beats everybody there, watches for the bounce. Doesn't block his defender. Mm -hmm. I think it was Sace that was coming on yes, his left yes, here. Yes, yes. He overtakes him, takes the ball. Yeah. Same instance happens again. Thebza gives him another ball. You know, it doesn't have the the, the the timing for it. He gives us that goal, yes. So yeah. my question then is, the way they fed him the ball that he scored, Yeah. did we finally realize how Vince, uh, or how Evidence wants to play? Yeah. Or does he need to do better mm. to collect cleaner more balls. Okay. Because he gets the opportunities. I know. He sunk the one. Okay. But there were more opportunities than yeah. that. Um, let's not forget the game is the teacher. Mm. As much as we've pointed out those tactical uh, mistakes that he did. So we jot them down. Now that's a coaching point in order for us to make him be, uh, to be a better player. But we don't substitute him based on those small anyana mistakes. So we need to polish our diamond because I got it rough. Mm. Now, what we did... He's only, what, 23? Yeah, he's only 23. Yeah. And remember, he's one of the boys that came from the development ranks of the senior team. He didn't just come from... He was at the Olympics? Yes. With I'm David Notuan? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be at the Olympics mm. with David. And boom, Stuart, I mean, Hugo Bruce one spot because he saw something out of him. Now, what you are saying is something that the coach probably might have pointed out, but it's not because of those that you take him out. So we're going to go to him and say, eh, Mahupa boy, eh, listen, when Odlala, you'll be able to protect the ball mm -hmm. this way. Don't allow the defender to come in front of you and pinch uh, by eye joints. Now, when you come to the goal he scored, remember when I said the social factor between him, Temba, Mukwena was not there. But I would like to believe that probably third or fourth game, they will understand who and how to play Makupa. And it paid dividends because now I could tell the way they pass him the ball. So he's that type of a striker. Even though our middle fielders took a lot of time to understand him, because you must remember, as a middle fielder, you, you are required to be the engine. You are required to, to give proper passes. You are required to create to be creative. And lastly, you must be intelligent. Hmm. Don't pass Makopa as if Opasau came at Erasmus. Those are two different players. Now, you don't pass the late Chief Ma Chippa Masinga as much as you pass Mark Williams or Sean Patlet. With Chippa is fit. With Mark Williams and Sean, space. Okay. You understand? I get you. So, so with Mahupa, he's shoot two. Fit and space. Hence, I'm saying... But he just needs to figure out... To figure to out. To deal with yes. the space. Because I need to mind you, Udala na ma middle fielders at level. The balls umkwena zlalayo dissect four defenders. So now he needs to read. Oh, if this ball is played over, so he, he's dissecting the whole back four. Whoever is coming on my side, I need to use my left in order to block, to shield him, and then use my right to control or to do whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are the things that we need to, to probably enhance my, my, my hope. Jeez, it's been the <laughs> national team. Yes, you're 23 and we're speaking about enhancement, but that's a conversation that's a, that's for another a, day. That's, a, that's an investment. And that's a conversation, true. It's an investment, true. Yes. <clears throat> now, the other player, he came alive in the Namibia game. He won the man of the matches. He was fantastic. Tembam Shishi. Yeah. Shikabala, Makeke. Yeah. Zwane, right? Yes. He was really brilliant. In the Tunisia game, the last game, yeah. our tactical approach needed him to be more subdued. Okay is what most might say, because yes, yeah. we weren't playing gang-ho to win that no, match yeah. necessarily. We needed a point. Yeah. 
What did you make of him in this game? <clears throat> When we look at Temba in this game, um, yes, of course, uh, towards the last 25, 30 minutes, you could, t- you could tell what you know, Temba's will. Because also, don't forget, he scored two goals against Namibia. Mm. And you want to tell me what the next opponents, they won't play, play against, I mean, around him. It's the same as Shoes. Shoes scored in each and every goal, I mean, game we played, go group stage. And again, against Algeria, quarterfinals. Mm. He scored the winner. And then you want to tell me what Ghana and... Tunisia in the finals, they can't send somebody to shadow Mike him or probably study him, study Utemba with I mean issues with what is he good at? His weaknesses are he, he, a map. It's the same with Temba. Or oh, mind you, they could see what, oh this this, this number Temba Zwane is the one that makes them tick. So Mukwena, Temba, and the two full bags are the one that makes South Africa to tick. Obviously, as much as we analyze them, they're analyzing us. So it's not fair for us to say he didn't play. That, that's a wrong wording because we are sitting and watching. Mm. But if you watch a little level coach, you will understand where I'm coming from. It's not because Temba didn't have the best of the best he came. It's the same like with Tao. He's one of the players that you need on the field in order for the other players to be able to, to dance. So Mauti Guye, Temba boy, saying him landing, I will come, come rest. Now you're managing your, your, your squad because you're having a, a serious game that is coming against Cape Verde. So they might be thinking, with, oh, always 79th minute by Mkipa. So you must remember Guti, in this in this tournament, like I said, Hugo and Helman might be sitting on the bench, but we need other people that are watching other teams for in case if we slang an up. We need to know what what is their strength and their weaknesses. But how Hugo manages Utemba is exactly what they do at Sundowns. He's what 34? Yeah. But that 34 is just a number because wouldn't be where we were if Temba didn't rise to the occasion against Namibia. Hmm. Temba's one of the getting a nod from Dr. Kumar. The last one before we look forward to the Cabo Verde match, which is going to be a big match um, for uh, the Republic of South Africa, this one. And I'll tell you a little thing about uh, Cabo Verde for those that don't know. Because I'm wondering about no Uti Gupi. I'll just give you a little <laughs> geographical explanation about Cabo Verde. But firstly, the last player we're going to touch on, um, Chivas. Player of the season here yeah. in the DSCP Premiership last season. Okay. He is just embodies what bossing the midfield is. Mm. Debza. Debza mm. <laughs> Debza, Debza is, a, is, is like a Vernon. Whenever he strikes, he doesn't make noise. Hmm. Mike Shire, you crippled. Hmm. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no. Those kind of snakes, they don't, they don't make noise. They don't, you don't, you, you don't see them. I born is Uti Zokshai. He's like that. Debza, you, you might think he's no longer there on the field. Now I'm nagi ko na pum. Now we have it. Let's look at the second goal. He draws a foul. Mm. The player gets a red card. Mm. He prepares his free kick, dead ball situation calmly. He looks at the wall. It's not because it's Tebucho, Mukwena. It's because what he does in his spare time. Those, you don't practice them during the coach's practice. You don't have time. It's up to an individual. When they say bend it like Beckham, you know the chairman of Kaiser Chiefs, Kezamta, once said he went to visit Man United mm. and he had a meeting with them. But while he was still in the meeting and he could see most of the players were walking out, But there was this bang, bang, bang. When you went out to check with you, what is happening? It was David Beckham with 100 soccer balls practicing those things. So it's exactly what to Tebucho. Because during training, you won't have time to practice that. Mm. So that, it's to An teach young, thing, young yeah. players and the current players. Would, that was not a fluke. It's something that he does every training session. 
because umbonelo o bege once what you know look at the confidence he had what you know lengisa was there any player who, who wanted to say let's do this trick or two no he didn't want anything because it was a direct free kick he looked at the position of the keeper but because i would like to believe good we are our practice and that's the reason why he scored that now all the players that we actually put up our hopes to in terms of Tawus, Temba, your your Mukwena, Rowan, you know, um, they so far because of their presence, that's that's the reason why we we, we find ourselves in the, in the in the quarterfinals. And then you have now players that these other countries or teams don't know. Your Masego. Now they know Mudao. Now they know Mudiba. Because now they've seen them. Mm. Now, good. Hey, South Africa, don't look at Temba Zwane only. So, when I look at now this team, now I can easily say, in my on my clearly couching me, sipping in my water under my eyes. Now I can see, I can see the '96 team in this today's or the current team. I can see that because the Mdawu. It's like Sizum Tau overlapping. Mudiba, David Nyat. David Nyat. Kekane, you'll remember Mark Fish. Somvala is a Tovi. That a guy like Ogwa can joke Mark. Clearly. Deboko, you see a bit of shoes. And then you look at Mukwena, a bit of Hellman. Hmm. You go to. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the right winger, uh, uh, Moran. Morena. Morena. A bit of me, probably, on the right hand side. Because he goes and challenge. He creates scoring opportunities. The penalty we had, it's because he went. He had a positive and attacking mind. It was crazy because. When you look at how he how they considered the penalty, the penalty. Tebucho is the last South African up front. Yeah. Tebucho is an opportunity for a one-on-one with the keeper. With the you keep. ask yourself, how? how? Yes, exactly. And then when you look at defensively when we've been under attack, yeah. and you look at who was winning the balls at the back, yeah. it's Tebucho again. Now, let me finish my list. Rowan, you see, Andre Aranzi. Aranzi yeah. Now, the last keeper in the Bafana Bafana, to give you a clean sheet in three games was Aranze. Mm. Now it's Rowan now. This is what we want to see in South Africa happening. Not in JC, let's get you messing as we go and and we don't understand. Now I can see Uti, where we're heading to. What is it that we do? Where is our strength? Where is our weaknesses? I can relate it. Oh, wow. Look at how come uh, Rowan, when he gets the ball, he's smart. Any ball, I bamba, you knowing it's a critical phase. We're not chasing the game. We are bamba lale pants buying time. That's experience. Jeez. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we need to look forward now to uh, Cabo Verde. Cape Verde is up next. Cape Verde is uh, an island, in fact, just off the West mm. um, uh, African coast. So when you look at where the West are, where Nigeria, Ghana, and all those Western countries are, just off of that, there are islands. And Cabo Verde is one of those islands. In fact, the size of Cabo Verde is so small that KZN is bigger than yes, Cape Verde. Yes, yes. Just KZN, not yeah. South Africa, is bigger than Cabo Verde. With the 2021 uh, census that says there's just under 600,000 people mm. in the entire Cape Verde. Yeah. That's how well they've done for themselves in football. They've done fantastically well for a small nation. We've played them before, Tony. Yes. We've struggled with them, we've beat them, but they're not an easy team to beat. And you can take a look at the last two times we've played them. Of course. Stuart Baxter was our coach. Yeah, I think the last two games, we lost both games. And home and away. Um, that was in 2017. So the personnel have changed. Those players that played in 2017 are not the same players that are playing today, both teams. And also the technical team, the approach... The growth of players in terms of experience is different. Now South Africa possesses of players that are understanding what, it, what does it take to play outside South Africa against all odds. So yes, we can go back and reflect quick history. But what is going to happen on Saturday? I study history, see, 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 begging a Because these boys, 
that South African national team. They know very well, Uguti. There are only two games, I mean, apart from, or I mean, f far from the Ilontosa, the, the final. The final. Mm. And you look at their attitude. You look at how, how, how they, they approach games. They, they, they have matured. They, they have actually, you know, also maybe to add, you know, sometimes in order for you to, to win a, win a tournament, Losing a, in a, a game makes you to become wiser, mm. you know, because sometimes you're going on and on, winning, winning. You're thinking, no, you, are, you, you have the best team. You have the strength, everything. But I'm not saying it's good to lose, but sometimes it's a fact that sometimes you lose in order for you to be perfect. This is what happened to Bafana. They lost their first game and throughout they've been unbelievable. There goes Cape Verde. They've been winning all the way. Only they played it row two two against uh, Egypt, hmm. and Cape Verde is the only team that I did mention. Ngati, they are the dark horses, and the reason why I'm saying they are the dark horses because uh, their strategy nobody has mastered in terms of Uba count. Cape Verde they score in the critical phase. When they played Ghana to send them home. Hmm. They scored in the 93rd minute that 2 1 victory. Now, when they drew in Egypt, Egypt, it was somewhere 97th, 98th minute. So that's critical phase. So, this is the kind of a team that plays up until the final whistle. If the whistling are up lower, they come at you. They will give you a run for your money. So, this is my analysis and what I perceive them as, as a Cape Verde team, what they're capable of. But also they have got their own weaknesses. At the moment, they 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 yes attacking, they have an edge. Mm. But when we're looking at the defensive face by, by, by a crack, they they've got their witness, I mean my weaknesses when it comes to their defense. But strengths, what I mentioned on mind, Juguti, they they play up until the last whistle and they score their winning goals. In the last minute. In the last minute of the game. The positive out of that yeah. is it was very similar with, with uh, Morocco. Morocco had more box entries in the 90th minute mm. and more shots on target, which was three yeah. per game in, 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 in this tournament, more than any other. But we yeah. were able to subdue them. Yes. For the Cabo Verde match for South Africa is going to be important. Hugo Bruce mm. has kept to the same team. Yeah. You know, ever since changing... Uh, the, the the back four yes. and sitting Ulu out, bringing Grant in, he's chosen that team. Yeah, uh, he made a change again when we saw Maseko starting in the one yes, game. Yes, yeah. But other than that, he's st stayed with the same team the last three games. Yes. Does he do the same now, Doggy? Does he change approach a little bit based on the last game and the fact that what you've just said? Yeah. The wing backs are, are yes, like this. Yeah. What do we do going up next? Uh, I think. Uh, going forward, um, firstly, we need to fix the mental factor of our players in terms of Bangas Fago, go pressure, go to Eman. We're in the quarterfinals and we want to do this Sisu said in 96 history. Mm. Secondly, they need to know good as much as they wanted more, K Verde also wanted more because they haven't won it. And it's history making for them to have gone thus far. And the last one, look, when you are Kuma knockout stages, there's no way you say you're going to avoid whoever. But go out there and make sure that you're being yourself, do it the way you used to do it. Now, when you talk to Hugo's approach and Hellman, they've, they've used Amasabs almost the same in all the games. And that's what we call continuity because they can attest to the fact that the game is won from the bench. Now, which sub came on and gave us what we wanted? Munara came mm -hmm. on, yep. stabilized the middle because of the legs. Mm. And Munara gave us going forward because Munara also is a box-to-box, -box, like a, a Tonga type of a thing, a John Moet, yeah. that will defend and go forward. You know, And also when in position, is very good. The first game, 
Then second game, such no, 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 no. It's a pansy boy. When he came on, scored the fourth goal. So we can see with oh, when the boy starts maybe struggling, and then we brought him on, scored the fourth goal. Now against or uh, uh, Tunisia and Morocco, same thing. But then now you can play around also to say with hey, the first game I've started with him, we didn't score, we didn't do anything. Do I continue or I don't? Personally, I'll say they've got ample options because they've introduced Ulondo Zumkwena and they've introduced Ulondo Zumkwena. So what do we do now? We have ample options from the boys, but the least that we could not afford to do, Uglalisa, a player in Agazilale, will tournament. Unless, if maybe that player is going to be somebody some needed to defend or somebody that is some needed when we're going forward, you know. So we don't just have to juggle around too much because the chemistry, the social factor amongst the subs that came on in the previous match have paid dividends for us in terms mm -hmm. of understanding and also giving us what we wanted because this is how you win tournaments. So this is not the time to bring in... A new a face. Uh, 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 no. We can only bring that type of a player based on his abilities. And also, we just want to tire the opponent because the likes of Apolis, they, they can give you, you know, those diagonal passes. They can give you a forward pass. He will always be a box to box. So that's a kind of a player that you need only if the game allows you to bring that kind of a player. But at the moment, I don't think they have to fix it because it's not yet broken. So, like I said, any player that hasn't played, they can only introduce if the need arises. So basically, chances are, if you haven't played <coughs> in the first four matches, in the matches, first four matches, no, you're not going to see game time in the last three. No, unless if maybe one of the players that is currently um, commanding, you know, to the starting lineup or coming as a sub, uber injured, out, absent, out, out. You know, so this is when they can introduce those players. Bafana, Bafana, are we beating Cape Verde? Uh, look, blood is thicker than water. Uh, from what I've seen, they've grown from a defeat and they become a force. And I don't want to say, or I wouldn't want to see them, you know, wasting the effort that brought them to where they are. So I would like to believe that they would qualify for the next stage you know count the stats are simple we've lost two yeah. which are the most recent games we've won two we've drawn one what are we going to do next Bafana Bafana up against Cabo Verde all the best hi guys uh, this is Doc Kumalo Yasuga Yasal PDL again Let's go out there and show love to Bafana Bafana. Let's go out there and show your support to Umzanzi Bafui to Bayenzela Tina. So, please, as long as you PDL Saturday, you can see that Bafana Bafana is against Cape Verde. Then again, it's because of Safa partnering with 10 beds. They are asking your support. They are asking you to show your face, to show your love. Who's the old Koge? It is Le Bafana Bafana. Funukbona, Ugutubani, Umtali Wena, Umtandayo, Moba Mena, Batanda Bong, Aslang and the PDL. Saturday, 10 p.m. kickoff, but be there early in order to see us talking about.